1976 Southwest Conference season saw the end to two eras in the beginning of another. Darrell Royal and Frank Broyles retired at the end of the season, while the University of Houston came roaring into the conference with its exciting Veer offense. Let's look back at that historic 1976 football season. There's no time to get ready, get set. In the 1976 Southwest Conference race, it's go right from the first gun as the Baylor Bears host the newcomer Houston Cougars in their conference debut and the opening game of the season. Things start badly for the Cougars as this first quarter punt attempt goes awry. Jay Wyatt manages to collar the ball and prevent a touchdown, but Baylor has an early lead. The favored Bears want more. Quarterback Mark Jackson and tailback Gary Blair move closer. As the Bears threaten, the Cougar defense, led by All-American Wilson Whitley, gets tough. So the Bears call on kicker Lester Bellrose, who makes it 5-0 at the half. Midway through the third quarter, it's Baylor's turn for bad luck. The pitch out gets away, and Mark Moore blankets it for Houston. Sparked by the turnover, the Houston attack starts humming. Quarterback Danny Davis carries it in. The try for two fails, and Houston leads six to five. But from there on out, it's all Cougars. Coach Bill Yeoman has seven backs suited up for the game, and he uses them all as Houston scores two touchdowns and a field goal in the final quarter to wrap up a 23-5 win for the Cougars. The newcomers serve notice that they've come to play and plan to be in the thick of the conference title race. SMU and TCU start their conference action early, too. Opening night finds the Horned Frogs at the Cotton Bowl for their traditional rivalry with the Mustangs, led by new head coach Ron Meyer. Experts have rated the game a toss-up, but Mustang quarterback Ricky Wesson has other ideas. Danelle Atkins finishes the drive from the three, and SMU leads seven to nothing. Second quarter, the league's number two passer Jimmy Dan Elsner finds Mike Renfro at the flag to make it 7 all. The tie lasts just two minutes and 31 seconds. SMU tries a little misdirection. Slot back Arthur Whittington takes the handoff and sprints 33 yards untouched. The Mustangs lead 14-7 at the half. Early in the third quarter, TCU punter Jimmy Don Young locks one to Whittington on the SMU 25. He picks up a convoy, settles into the rocking chair, and goes trucking toward the conference punt return title. 75 yards later, it's 10-4, good buddy, and the Mustangs lead 21-7. Tony Accomando blasts right guard for the final steps, but the outcome is already decided. And the Mustangs give Ron Meyer his first win as a Southwest Conference coach. Up next on Southwest Conference Legends. October is in the air as the Texas Tech Red Raiders drop in on the Aggies in College Station to start their conference season. Southwest Conference Legends is brought to you by Whataburger. Just like you like it. Is it possible to fit a square peg into a round hole? Well, if that square peg is Whataburger's new patty melt, and that round hole is your kisser, you betcha. Introducing the Whataburger patty melt. Two patties, jack cheese, creamy pepper sauce, and grilled onions on Texas toast. What a burger! Just like you like it. Hey, if you're planting seeds for food plots, 
gardens, or grass, you got to use Delta Ag Seed Coat. Just one four ounce scoop or a packet like this can do up to 50 pounds of seed. Sprinkle the powder over the seed, stir it in, and plant your crop. That's all it is to it. You'll get more plants out of the ground quicker with better roots. This means more drought resistance, more nutrient uptake, and the result, healthier plants. Farmers have used it for years. Give your plants a great start with Seed Coat from Delta Ag. If you have Chase Checking, you now get an exclusive discount on a Chase Home Mortgage. <laughs> Introducing Chase Exclusives. Bigger discounts. Because getting more matters. Chase what matters. If you have Chase Checking, now your Chase Freedom credit card earns triple rewards in even more places. Introducing Chase Exclusives. More triple rewards. Because getting more matters. Chase what matters. The Toyota Tundra, tough, powerful, legendary quality. Toyota's back for NASCAR 2008. Log on to MySouthwestRacing.com for everything NASCAR and for your chance to win a new 2008 Toyota Tundra. Toyota Tundra, the truck that's changing it all. Coming up this week on your Toyota Truck Outdoors Report, our team of reporters covers all the lakes in our region to tell you where the hottest fishing spots are for your upcoming weekend. The Toyota Truck Outdoors Report, Thursday on FSN Southwest. You never know who's talking about your favorite teams on Rodeo Ford's DFW Sports Speed. That's right, throw it to Dirk in the blender. Let him do the rest. Monday and Thursday nights, watch Rodeo Ford's DFW Sports Speed on FSN Southwest. October is in the air as the Texas Tech Red Raiders drop in on the Aggies in College Station to start their conference season. The undefeated Red Raiders, ranked 15th in the nation, slam home touchdowns on their first three possessions to stagger the Aggies. Two came on passes to end Sammy Williams from reserve quarterback Rodney Allison, who replaced injured starter Tommy Donovan. Allison scores the third himself. And in the closing minutes of the second quarter, has the Red Raiders moving again when cornerback Mike Williams picks off a pass. His fine run back sets up an Aggie field goal that makes it 21 to 3 at halftime. In the third quarter, freshman Curtis Dickey gets the first Aggie touchdown. The try for two fails, and it's Tech 21, A&M 9. Then David Walker unloads a 76-yard bomb to Randall Teeth to close the gap. But two Tech field goals help give the Red Raiders a 27-16 win and preserve their perfect record. This Southwest Conference Legends Game of the Season is brought to you by Whataburger. Newcomer Houston, leading the conference after knocking off Baylor A&M at SMU, welcomes the Arkansas Razorbacks to the Bayou City, only to discover that the Hogs are ungracious visitors. Cornerback Vaughn Lusby sets things off in the first quarter by snatching this Houston pass. Quarterback Ron Calcagni capitalizes with his eight-yard scamper, and Arkansas leads. In the second quarter, Ben Cowens gets the call. The conference rushing champ breaks over the left side, shifts into overdrive, and outruns safety Elvis Bradley for 90 yards. The run ties an Arkansas record and gives the Hogs a 14-0 lead at intermission. On their first possession of the fourth quarter, Houston makes its move. Starting on his own 20, quarterback Danny Davis pilots the Cougars downfield. Darrell Thomas cracks over from the sixth. It's 14 to seven. With two minutes left, the Cougars move toward the tying score. Davis drills one toward pay dirt, but linebacker Larry Jackson picks it off to preserve the Arkansas win and put the Hogs in a tie for the conference lead. Up next 
on Southwest Conference Legends. October 30th is bright and clear in Lubbock as the Red Raiders play host to the Texas Longhorns. Time now for the Vault Sports Update. Vault drinks like a soda, kicks like an energy drink. Get to it! The Astros make their final visit to Shea Stadium. The story of game one in a moment. I guess we'll take uh, Morty. Yes! Pick last. Ouch. A vault will put you back on top. Quenches and kicks. Incoming! Yeah! You're a super soda mercenary! Vault. Drinks like a soda, kicks like an energy drink. Get to it! First of four between the Astros and New York Mets, and Brian Schneider reaches out and gets this one. A two-run shot made it 3-0 Mets in the second inning. Roy Oswald would not allow another base runner the rest of the game. He pitches a complete game, but the Mets win 3-0. That's your vault update. Retailers don't want you to see the information about to be disclosed. Hi, I'm Tony Galata. This is my wife, Carrie Galata. This is our house, my wife's dream house. And we furnish most everything in this house with products from Direct Buy. We purchased the breakfast table and chairs. We looked at that table in some other places. They ran around $3,500, and we picked it up for around $1,500. If you're building, remodeling, or simply redecorating a room, there's now a way to buy virtually everything you need at prices you never imagined possible. We've saved, I think, well over $20,000. Just on our kitchen alone, we saved almost $10,000. It adds up to about a thirty dollars to $40,000 savings overall. Call the number on your screen now to receive your free insider's guide to buying direct. Plus, you'll also receive a free visitor's pass for an exclusive tour of your local direct buy showroom. Call right now to get started buying the Direct Buy way. Stop paying retail and become part of Direct Buy, the private members-only showroom and design center. Don't wait another minute. Pick up the phone and call now. October 30th is bright and clear in Lubbock as the Red Raiders play host to the Texas Longhorns. Head coaches Steve Sloan and Daryl Royal find a record crowd packed into Jones Stadium. Both teams are undefeated in conference play and share the top spot with Arkansas. Things start popping early as Larry Dupree picks off a Mike Cordero pass to set up Tex versus Gore. But the Longhorns bounce right back. Ted Constanzo takes over at quarterback, hands off to Earl Campbell, and the horns are moving. Campbell decoys the Tech defense, and Constanzo ties it up. Texas trades a touchdown for a Tech field goal in the second quarter, and it's Texas 14, Tech 10 at the half. On Texas' first play of the third quarter, fullback Jimmy Johnson, substituting for injured Earl Campbell, breaks loose and races 60 yards to increase the Longhorn lead. Tech comes back with two third period touchdowns, including this determined push by Larry Isaac and regains the lead 24 to 21. Saw time again. As the final stanza opens, Constanzo picks up 18. Then Johnson scores his third touchdown, and Texas is up 28 to 24. Third and long, things look dim for the Red Raiders, but quarterback Rodney Allison breaks loose and picks up a vital 22 yards to keep the Tech hopes alive. Fourth and goal at the one. Billy Taylor gets the call and soars over for the score as Tech takes a thriller 31 to 28. The 
Baylor Bears pick a cold and wet November afternoon to call on the Rice Owls in Houston. The Bears use a ball control offense and a stingy defense to ground Coach Homer Rice's attack. The crisp Baylor offense runs a total of 103 plays to only 46 for the Owls. Bear quarterback Mark Jackson has a good day hitting on better than 65% of his passes. Baylor tailback Gary Blair, number 11, was the game's leading rusher with 103 yards. The hustling Bear defense holds national passing champion Tommy Kramer to only 13 completions. His only score comes on this beautiful 98-yard kickoff return by James Sykes in the second quarter. It's the longest return of the season and helps Sykes to the conference kickoff return title. Grant Taft's Bears take the game and go on to an impressive 7-3-1 record that earns them the number 19 spot in the national rankings. Three weeks are still left in the 76 season, but it's all on the line as the Houston Cougars charge into Jones Stadium to challenge the Red Raiders for the conference lead and a ticket to the Cotton Bowl. The fired up Cougars dominate the first half. Behind the near-perfect performance of quarterback Danny Davis, Houston builds an impressive 24-5 lead by intermission. The Cougars are 6-2 for the season, with only the loss to Arkansas to mar their conference slate. Coming back from a 2-8 season last year, Houston is fighting the old bugaboo that says a new team never finishes high in the conference standings. But they've shown everybody that they deserve at least their ninth place national ranking. Sparked by a TD off an interception, the Tech offense comes alive in the last quarter. Rodney Allison directs the Red Raiders as they make a comeback to protect their perfect 8-0 record and fifth place national ranking. As time ticks away, Tech cuts the margin to eight points. A Houston fumble gives Tech new life with three and a half minutes to go. Allison shows the style that brought him all conference honors and connects with Sylvester Brown for 34 yards. Behind a well-executed screen, Larry Isaac moves the Red Raiders to the Houston nine with 150 left to play. Allison goes for broke, aiming for Sammy Williams in the end zone. But safety Elvis Bradley cuts it off, and it's all over but the countdown. Tech closes the season with a 10-1 record, a share of the conference title for the first time, and a date with Nebraska in the Astro Blue Bonnet Bowl. For Bill Yeoman and his Cougars, it's cotton time. The first time in history that a team has won a share of the title and the host spot in the Cotton Bowl in its first conference season. Up next on Southwest Conference Legends. A national television audience joins 49,000 fans in Austin as the Texas Longhorns and the Arkansas Razorbacks wind up the 1976 Southwest Conference season. Is it possible to fit a square peg into a round hole? Well, if that square peg is Whataburger's new patty melt, 
and that round hole is your kisser, you betcha. Introducing the Whataburger Patty Melt. Two patties, jack cheese, creamy pepper sauce, and grilled onions on Texas toast. What a burger! Just like you like it. Hey, Lisa, what do you think? What is that? It's my new PWC. And the awesome protection plan I got for it. There's an easier way to protect your PWC. Call GEICO. They help insure all types of vehicles. GEICO Power Sports. Insurance for your car and the other stuff that moves you. This is your Dodge Lone Star Cup update. Hey everybody, Neil Beasley here, host of High School Spotlight, and it's time for your final Dodge Lone Star Cup update. Of course, the Dodge Lone Star Cup, basically the all-sports trophy for high schools with academic contests counted as well. In 5A, the Woodlands of Conroe will take the Dodge Lone Star Cup. Great four-point battle with South Lake Carroll. In 4A, Highland Park dominated all year long. Friendswood wins the battle for second place. We'll get 3A, where Canyon comes from behind to nip Argyle in the final update. Argyle had been number one most of the year. In 2A competition, Pope and Salado tie, but Salado gets the Dodge Lone Star Cup based on their two championships they won in boys golf and baseball. And finally, in 1A play, Lindsay hangs on to the top spot as Seymour moves all the way up from seventh to finish in second place. Check out High School Spotlight Sundays at 11.30 a.m. all year long, and congrats to all the 2008 Dodge Lone Star Cup winners. Get ready for Rangers baseball on FSN Southways. There's the windup. Then the pitch. Any small chance to keep swinging in October is all Josh Hamilton and the Rangers need to keep their never give up attitude. And taking another series from Grady Sizemore and the Indians only adds fuel to the fire. Indians, Rangers, tonight on FSN Southways. Southwest Conference Legends has been brought to you by Whataburger, just like you like it. A national television audience joins 49,000 fans in Austin as the Texas Longhorns and the Arkansas Razorbacks wind up the 1976 Southwest Conference season in a game which historians will note as the final game for two of America's most successful coaches. Razorback coach Frank Royals has announced that he will end his 19-year career at Arkansas with this game. The 10-letter man from Georgia Tech took over at Arkansas in 1958 and built a remarkable record of 139 wins against only 53 losses and four ties. During his tenure in the Ozarks, Royals teams won or shared the conference crowd seven times while picking up invitations to 10 postseason bowl games and one national championship. This will be Darrell Royals' last time on the sidelines, too. The colorful philosopher from Hollis, Oklahoma, who confirmed rumors of his retirement following the game, came to the University of Texas in 1957 and fashioned a record which may never be equaled. During his 20 years in Austin, he established a record of 162 wins, 42 losses, and four ties. The most victories of any coach in the 62-year history of the Southwest Conference. When he stepped down, Royal had not experienced a losing season in football since his junior year in high school. But the game must go on. And with junior fullback Earl Campbell back in action, the Texas offense finds the spark it has sorely missed for the past six weeks. Campbell runs for 131 yards and scores two of the Longhorns' touchdowns. Freshman quarterback Mark McBath directs the Texas attack and picks up 125 yards and one TD. It was early in the third quarter before Arkansas could score. Junior Steve Little puts him in light with two field goals, one from 50 yards and another from 34.
Freshman Clint Allen scores the Hogs' only touchdown as he dives over from the two. Texas takes the game 29 to 12 as the season ends and the curtain falls on two of the most distinguished coaching careers in football history. For more than 30 years, sportscaster Kern Tips was the voice of Southwest Conference football. Every year, the outstanding senior on each conference team is nominated for an award named in his honor. The award recognizes sportsmanship, character, and scholarship, as well as athletic ability. The winner of the ninth annual Kern Tips Memorial Trophy, selected by more than 100 sports writers and broadcasters from the conference area, is Brian Hall, kicking specialist for the Texas Tech Red Raiders. He receives his award from Charles R. Sitter, Senior Vice President of Exxon Company USA. Despite the loss of his right foot in a childhood accident on his family's farm, Hall became one of the leading place kickers in Texas Tech history. He was the leading Tech scorer in both 1975 and 1976. An agriculture communications major, Hall is active in student government and other campus and community activities. Old Man Winter has a seat on the 50-yard line at the Cotton Bowl as the Southwest Conference co-champ Houston Cougars play host to the Terrapins of the University of Maryland. After a quick Cougar score, Mark Moore blocks a Mike Sochko punt to set Houston up again. And before a freshman can spell Terrapin, Aloys Blackwell cracks through for 33 yards, and it's Houston 14, Maryland nothing. Three minutes later, after a turf fumble, Blackwell scores again, and it's 21-zip at the end of the first quarter. In the second quarter, Maryland quarterback Mark Mangus gets the Terps rolling toward a score, but Houston matches it, and it's 27-7 at intermission. In the second half, Mangus keeps the Maryland attack warmed up, and by the middle of the fourth quarter, the Houston lead is cut to six points, and the Cougar faithful are getting nervous. With under five minutes to play, Davis is almost caught deep in his own territory, but he finds Robert Laverne to save the day for the Cougars, who go on to beat Maryland 30-21 to for the Cotton Bowl crown. Between them, Darrell Royal and Frank Broyles won more than 300 whopping games and four national titles. Pretty amazing. Houston won the championship three of its first four years. They were in the Southwest Conference. For a copy of the 1976 Southwest Conference season, contact the Texas Sports Hall of Fame in Waco, Texas. Get to know the Rangers inside and out as FSN Southwest gets you up close and personal with your favorite players. This is the show built just for Rangers fans. Rangers.